our creator, the resurrection of your son offers life to all peoples of earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. For those of us who are here gathered, let us share a sign of peace with a wave here in the sanctuary. If you are online, it's a good time to share a word of peace in the comment section. But wherever we are and however we're participating in worship, most importantly, let us go out and remember we are a people of peace. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygi, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome both Jews and Christ-lites, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said they were filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken from the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show, show portents in the heaven above and signs in the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel, John chapter 14. The promise of the Holy Spirit. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name. So that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you name if my name you ask in my name if in my name you ask me anything i will do it if you love me you will keep my commandments and i will ask the father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever this is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him you know him because he abides with you and he will be in you the gospel of the lord Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated.
grace and peace to you from God and our Savior Jesus. Amen. Happy birthday. People might be a little confused. What is going on? What do you mean, happy birthday? Well, today is Pentecost. So it is the birth of the church, as uh, Jesus uh, promised that he would send the Holy Spirit, and the church was born. This Christian celebration, Pentecost, is also known as the Jewish Feast of Weeks. Uh, same festivity, also known as the Harvest Shavuot, and the Day of First Fruits. Both are celebrations of bountiful harvest. One, the Festival of Weeks, is the bountiful harvest of crops and so forth, so that we can be sustained. Pentecost is the harvest of the gathering of the church, and with the Holy Spirit, our soul and our spirit, so that we might live. Do we depend on just the physical things of this world? Or do we believe in the spiritual world? One that gives us life beyond today for everlasting. And the color for Pentecost is red. And obviously, I didn't have the right tie. So one of our members said, I'm buying you a Pentecost tie. So. Wearing my Pentecost tie today. Although, you can wear any color and the spirit is still in you. With that said, what we read in Acts was predicted by John the Baptist and the risen Jesus. Both predicted this high moment in the church where God promised the Holy Spirit. It enabled the community to carry an inspired word about God's Messiah to the entire household of Israel and now to all the world. As it says, they were all together in one place. This is not about location. We think about that. Go to that room, but it's also about relationship. They were all together in one place, in heart and soul and mind, with the belief that the Spirit would come. But not everyone believed. As you hear, they've had too much wine, um, that they're drunk. Do people really act this way? I hope we're a little bit different than the general public as Christians. And then all the different nations mentioned included some that no longer existed at the time of Acts in the writing. Why would they mention nations that don't exist? Because the Spirit was there from the beginning it is present then and now and always will be. That is the work of the Spirit, tying everyone of all times together. And the Holy Spirit, we have to remember, is not just a personal gift. They were gathered together. That's when the Spirit would come, when they were gathered. It's important to remember that the gift that the people are given who belong to God and thus one another, that nothing can separate us from the love of God in the Spirit, the love of the people of God, the love of God in Christ. The Spirit came so that all those different nations who couldn't communicate with one another could through that love of God in the Spirit. And one of the Facebook quotes I've I've lifted up is, holy God, no one is excluded from your love. That is what Pentecost is all about. And so when you had that dissent, they're drunk. Peter responds to the dissidents with the Joel's prophecy. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. Holy God, no one is excluded from your love. Do you know how powerful a statement that is to have women included in this? Sons and daughters, children, to have slaves included in this blessing of God because those people were not worthy. 
But in God, nothing can separate us. Everyone is included. This was the mission to restore God's kingdom. The coming of the Lord's great and glorious day no longer conjures up Im images of God's imminent retribution, but instead that of Pentecost with its promise of empowered witness to God's salvation. What did it say at the end? Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Holy God, no one is excluded from your love. And what happens when we get saved? Kind of a word that lots of Lutherans kind of go, oh, what do you mean by that? The prophecy emphasizes forgiveness and complemented by the initiation into life with God's spirit, a new way of living, born again, as Paul writes to the Galatians. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Without this understanding, the ministry of the church is corrupted by self-interest, and its presence in the world ceases to matter. I think that's what's happening today. I think what's happening today, people have taken on Christianity, they've made it their own personal salvation and to hell with everybody else, and they've taken on the judgment of God upon others. And what does it say? No, the Spirit of love and compassion is given to us. That we can get along with everyone, even if we speak differently, even if we aren't in the same place. Through the Spirit, we are in the place to connect with all people. Jesus explains to his disciples in his farewell address that I read as the gospel, the words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you don't, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and, in fact, will do greater works than these. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name... You ask me for everything in Jesus' name and what's important to Jesus. I mean, praying for that new car, not an issue. It's much greater than that. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. In his name, Jesus tells us, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because, and hear these words as Peter is speaking to you, because he abides with you and he will be in you. And when people ask you, show me the Father, may you not speak on your own, but by the Father who dwells in you, so that, some may come to believe because of the works you do. In fact, greater works than Jesus, we are able to do as the body of Christ. Like Jesus, the works that we do are not our own, but the Spirit working in and through us in Jesus' name, demonstrating the power and the character of God, thus revealing God to the world. We show our love of Jesus neither by clinging to a cherished memory of him, nor by retreating into our own private experience. Rather, we continue to love Jesus by doing his works and keeping his commandments. That is when we move outside of our own private experience and into life living with Jesus. And we demonstrate it in our lives. It is then we find ourselves again in the love of Christ. Just as Jesus' union with God was not a private, mystical union in which their love for one another was self-beneficial, on the contrary, the love of God and Jesus was a public love for all. Jesus does not promise the Holy Spirit or his own return to individuals, but to the community who lives in God's love. I'm going to invite you to pull out the Bible in your pew if you're online, grab your Bible, or simply listen along. Acts 2, you can find it on page uh, 113, 113 in the back of the Bible. The Old Testament has its own numbering, 
the New Testament, start from the back and find 113. And on that far right column, starting at verse 43. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple... They broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of who? All the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Awe came upon everyone because of the many wonders and signs being done through the apostles. That's our work to do. Just as Jesus said, believing in me because of the works themselves, very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these. How can we do greater works than Jesus? What did they do as we read through those few verses? They had all things in common. Remember, the Spirit came because they were all in the same place relationally with the same purpose for all the world. And they sold their possessions and good and distributed the proceeds to all as any had need. We as a congregation do that through the many organizations that we support. Jesus fed 5,000. Everybody's like, wow, he fed 5,000. Do you realize the majority of food distribution um, in the social safety net is led by Christian organizations 319,274 visits to the food shelf 2020 per month happens in our state because of the generosity of Christians who share and they give, sell all their possessions and goods so that those who have needs are met. What, are they drunk? They'd really do that? Yes, we do that. With Feed My Starving Children, Loaves and Fishes, Meals on Wheels. What am I forgetting? Veep. Oh, the biggest one, the food shelf that we support in our neighborhood. And then they spent much time together in the temple, and they broke bread at home. This sanctuary is both our temple and our home, welcoming all to the table as we will break bread together today, having been forgiven and then strengthened by God in Christ. And doing all of this in Jesus' name is what creates the goodwill of all the people. If you don't take anything else away from the message today, is what you say and what you do creating goodwill for all people? That, I believe, is the key. And one of the best ways that we create goodwill is for our members who are unable to get here anymore, whether they are hospitalized or in transitional care or they're at home unable to attend. We have 596 members. They're not all here today. And there's a number of them that can't get here. I'm thankful for our, our live stream because so many of them said, it's so nice to at least be with church visually, but they also love to be visited. This week, I tried to make three visits, one for a member who's in the hospital, another one who's in transitional care, and then a third one who's at a nursing home at the moment. I said I tried because when I went to the transitional care, you have to fill out the COVID thing and my family had had COVID last week and the week before. And so even though I tested negative that morning, they were like, nope, you can't go. And then they were like, you tested negative, though? You can go up for just a bit. Well, God protected me and, and our patient because we got up there, and he was just starting therapy. So I had my little communion, you know, wafer and cup, 
And I'm like, here you go, I don't want to interrupt. You know how this works. See ya. God bless. And then I called the other person, and that person said, well, talk to the nurse. And the nurse said, no, you can't go. But me, trying to reach 596 people? Not achievable. That's why I'm so grateful for our care team. Judy Gross Sandine has been leading that for a number of years. It's about a dozen people who participate in visiting other members. And the love and the concern that is shared from member to member as we care for each other. If you are interested, know that it's one of the most beautiful ways to serve in the church. They're having a meeting on Monday, the 13th at 11 AM. Um, if you can't make that, simply let Judy know. Put it on the back of your welcome card. And um, please be a part of that ministry. And as I'm there, they were all gathered together, sharing and breaking bread together. There's a statistic that says a healthy church, every member has a relationship with eight other members who are not family members. And there's lots of people who say, I just don't get connected to church because the church is all about connection. And so as we have our caregivers going out to care for our members who are unable to be here, I encourage you, who are your eight people? And if you don't have eight people, how will you participate? Jubilee, you're all together, right? Would you say you could call on each other in need and help one another? You've already done that? Yeah. That's what it means to be in ministry together. And they benefit the church, but they get benefits of their own being together. Doing all of this in Jesus' name. As a church, we are the family of God. And we need to demonstrate that and live that out in our lives. And remember on Pentecost, who did the Spirit fall upon? All of them. The Spirit is with you. It is in you. Trust the Spirit to lead and guide and strengthen you and give you confidence to go out and do works even greater than the works Jesus did. As a follower of Jesus filled with the Spirit, we are to love all people, and that begins in this place so that it can go out to other places. Repeating Jesus' words on the at the ascension, you will be my witnesses to those who are close to you, near you, to your enemies, and to those who are far away. It wasn't just upon Peter or the other 10 disciples, but all who were gathered, 120 people, and filled with the Spirit, 3,000 more joined. And then having the goodwill of all the people, the Lord added to their numbers those who were being saved. May each one of us be counted in that number of being added. And we celebrate one. We lift up one. Remember, a compliment for one is not a criticism against another, but it's a, it's a special day today as we celebrate Ju uh, Julie and her decade of serving our church in the office. And she will continue serving in her retirement Julie is someone who is spirit-led, has a huge heart, full of concern and compassion. She loves God and has the goodwill of all the people. She keeps all of you in mind. I can't tell you, and this is why she doesn't want a big to-do, how many times you cry in the office. <laughs> I'll come home from work and go, and Nancy will ask, so did, did Julie cry today? <laughs> Just having a little fun. I mean, what is she going to do, quit? Um, <laughs> so it's appropriate that we celebrate her on Pentecost because she does create the goodwill for all the people. How many of you have experienced goodwill from Julie? You can turn and look at all these hands. I wouldn't have you look if they weren't up. So thank you for all that you've done and all that you mean to this place. And she's not going anywhere, so this isn't a goodbye. It's a celebration of one ministry as she can, continues in her other ministry of both the choir and, the, and Jubilee. 
And she stops in at the office and tells us what we did wrong in the bulletin. <laughs> the Spirit is upon every one of us. Let us live with that Spirit. Let us trust in that Spirit. Let us go out and she rejoice and share that joy with all people because you all received it. And it's not only upon you, it's within you. And don't speak on yourself, but speak on all the good goodness that God has done through Christ and does through you in the Spirit. And to remember, it's our birthday. Happy birthday! Amen. together let us profess our faith with the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Filled with the promised Holy Spirit, let us pray in confidence for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Pour out your spirit upon the church, that we may be filled with a proclamation of your grace for the sake of your whole world. Come, Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. Pour out your spirit upon the earth to renew the face of the ground, that all may be fed and nourished by the abundant resources you provide for your people. Come, Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. Pour out your spirit upon the nations. May leaders, judges, and peacekeepers stand against oppression and seek peace throughout the world. Come, Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. Pour out your spirit upon those who suffer, that they may know healing, hope, and joy. Come, Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. Pour out your spirit upon this congregation, that we may keep your commandments and reveal your grace through ministries that serve this community and the world. We give you thanks for the ministry of Julie Klein. We rejoice in her decade of service to your congregation. May her example be our guide as we continue to carry out your work. Come, Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. Pour out your spirit upon all those who mourn, that your promise of everlasting life and peace make our hearts sing even in the face of death. Come, Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. In resurrection hope, we commend to you all for whom we pray, trusting in the promise of new life through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. To all who are spiritually weary and seek rest, the Holy Spirit is given. To all who mourn and long for comfort, the Holy Spirit is given. to all who sin and need a Savior, the Holy Spirit is given. that is what this meal was all about on the night in which our Lord was betrayed, gathered with his disciples, knowing that they would desert him, that one would deny him, another betray him. He gave himself. As he took bread and said, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, gave it all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Take and drink. Do this in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we share the body and blood of our Lord and Savior who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. I invite those who are assisting to please come forward. For those of you who are at home, this is the body of Christ. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the blood of Christ. Take and drink. Do this in remembrance of me. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks that you have fed us even now with a banquet that is yet to come. Keep us alert for signs of your presence in the world around us. Send us as healing oil and sheltering comfort to those in need. And make us bold in testifying to the light of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now for our benediction, it'll be a blessing from Julie and her daughter, 
Jana and her granddaughter, Sadie.